The video you're about to watch is a coaching call that we just did with a client of ours called Fritz. He owns a large group training facility, about 1,600 square feet in Atlanta. And what we did is we took him and walked through his last three months and the numbers and stats that he gave us. And we coach him through how to basically change almost his entire model, take away some classes, increase profitability, and ultimately gave him the exact step-by-step -step formula on how he can go from where he's at to a million dollar gym in roughly 45, 50 minutes. So enjoy the video. Um, okay, Fritz, dude, I'm stoked, man. I'm stoked for this. Um, I know there are some other people that are attending this, but I'm stoked just to treat this, treat this as like, this is your private coaching session with myself, with Dave, with Mike, and then soon with Ed, um, when he hops on, and we're going to just walk through where you are now and walk through kind of your next steps, what you need to start looking at. And then ultimately long-term goals. You cool with that? Absolutely. All right, sweet, man. Um, I'm going to let Dave kind of lead this from this standpoint. Uh, we, by the way, thank you for sending the stats over for the last three months. We're going to have a couple of questions in regards to what those stats look like. Um, there's a couple discrepancies that we found when we were going through it. So we want to just kind of shore up some of those questions and doubts that we have on our side. So we have the accurate data, Okay. but either way we'll, we'll get it. I think it would be helpful as we walk into this day, just to give a little background on like full story Fritz of kind of like how you started gym type, where you're at, um, as well as a snapshot of currently last in June, how much revenue you guys did, how many members, all that stuff. Yeah. Cool. So Fritz, if it's cool with you, let's start there and let's kind of give the breakdown in, in regards to what your, what your business is. So if you don't mind, like, let's start there. How many, uh, what type of gym, where are you guys located? Let's start on the easy stuff. Where are you located? Um, North Atlanta. So specifically Snellville. All right, cool. And then with that being said, like what type of gym, like what, what mode, what mode, of fitness are you guys in um boutique small group all right cool so are you guys explicitly small group when you say small group kind of explain to me like what's the number of individuals that you have in a session um currently um it's 12 um 12 people per session i smile because i know you want me to change my number but it's currently 12 people per session we just um launched semi-private we run about two months now and of course we do one-on-ones all right, cool. And then from that being said, like how many square feet do you have of uh, usable space? I know you guys just moved, but how many square feet do you have in your gym? 1,500. All right, dope, 1,500. And then out of that 1,500, um, just, and so just to be clear too, Fritz, if you, if you see me typing, if you see like Kale writing, you see Mike writing, we're just taking notes in our conversation with you. We're 100% listening to you. We just want to make sure. Out of your 1,500, how much usable space is there? Like how much is there actually like I would say about 12, 1200. Okay, cool. All right, dude, let's, um, let's get rocking and rolling then. So with that being said, let's go down and tell me a little bit about like the month. Kale asked about it. I want to hit on it too, but like the month of June. So let's kind of run down your, your month of June for you. Like how much did you guys do in front end sales uh, in June? Let's go down this. Let's, let's just do the normal, normal good stuff here. How much ad spend did you guys have in June? Ad spend in June was um, 1440. Okay, cool. And then with that being said, uh, how many leads did you guys get with the four, from the 1440? Um, 236. All right, cool. Less than five bucks a lead. That's all right. Um, <laughs> lead cost, bro. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's pretty phenomenal. Uh, how many appointments? How many appointments did you set? Um, 100 scheduled. 44. Scheduled? 44. Okay. And then how many sold? 13 cost of acquisition give me one second just working on the cost of acquisition here and then what was the total i'm sorry i didn't even get the number from what was the total revenue that you got for the month the total like revenue front, front end sell front end sell revenue for it so i apologize um upfront cash was 30 was 63.72 your cac was 111 yep and your average cash collected per client that you sold was 490 cool all right it's a great cac by the way easy to scale. what should i be is that the range I should be in, Kel? If you're under 140 or 150, you're 150, in yeah. fantastic. Shit. Frankly, under 250, if you're selling a six week challenge, you're good. But like, if you're under 150, dude, just scale to the moon. Okay, cool. Which is great, but let's talk about a couple other things. Like while we like while we got it, because like this is a good part to start with. But let's kind of dive in and grab like kind of look at the rest of this thing. Tell me a little bit in regards to let's go. How many number? What number? How many number of sessions do you guys have each week, and how long are your sessions? Um, we have sixteen sessions per week. Um, as far as 
our small group in there 45 minutes. And then we have six semi-private sessions per week, which are 45 minutes as well. Can you, so just, be, just so I'm clear on this, right? So when you say small group, that's the group of 12. 12, right? yep, that's my group of 12, yep. How many people are in your semi-privates? No more than four. Dope. How many people do you currently have in your small group sessions? Like how many, well, how, what's your membership base for small group? Um, as far as how many members are in it? Yep. 36 plus, so 36, 46. Now, don't count 52. challenges. Hold 52. On, hold, on. hold on. Don't, don't count challenges. Don't so count just 30, 36, 36. All right, cool. The reason why we don't want to count challenges is I just because we're going to look at this from an EFT base in a little bit. Okay. So we just want to know, like, so we can look at hypothetical max for you, big picture wise, and say, cool. So this is the number that we need to be at because we'll talk about challenges when we get to conversion on the backside to see where you're at in terms of like your conversion rate. Okay. Does that make sense? Yep. Cool. And then of that, you got, you said we got six small groups that are the semi private sessions. How many people do you have in semi private right now? I have. Um, the morning sessions of Phil, I got four in those three sessions. And then I have only one in my evening session. So we have five total people in the program. Yes. All right, cool. Is it, is it cool? Is it, is it cool if I start off the bat? Please go eat, tear my head off. How many business? All right. Usually, real quick, if I can jump in here, Dave, we always ask permission. Like, is it cool if we just tell you what to do? <laughs> yes, please. Just, that okay. All right, dope. So here, here's where here's where my thought process is, and, and Ed and Kale, I'd love and and Mike, I would love for you guys to to give input on this as well, because um, I feel like as many voices that we can talk to this, I think would be good. So if we think about this right, you have 36 total members for your you got 36 total members for your uh, for your what we're gonna call prime like we'll just call it large group or larger okay. group. Yeah. All right. We've got 36 total members with there. However, we have 16 classes per week. If we think about that, it's virtually impossible for classes to be full. Yes, absolutely. Correct. Is that, is that, is that, is that a fair assumption? Yes. Dope. You have six classes for, for five individuals and you're one on four sessions. So it's virtually yeah. impossible for those classes to be full. Yeah. Yes. So it would be irresponsible of me to tell you to keep all of those sessions. Can All right, so I should cut some sessions out. So before we before we say cut some sessions, let's look and see what sessions are going to be the best for us to affect, and then go from there. Does that make sense? Okay. Yes. Because okay, here I'm I'm going to give you some quick gym math on this one. All right, typically speaking, because you guys are you're not using barbells in those in those bigger sessions, right? No. Dope. So that means that we understand that you can basically do 50 square feet per person within that in that space. Does yeah. that make sense? So each person is responsible for their own square, which is 50 square feet. Now, if we're saying that you basically have 1,200 square feet of usable space, then that gives us 24 people that we can that fit sense. in. Does that, that make sense? Does that make, that, yeah. that makes sense, right? Yep. Cool. So that basically means that like we can decrease that because then you can basically put two classes can go to one class in that situation. Does that make sense? Yeah. So basically for your large group, to get you to where you need to be, number one. And this is going to be, and, and, and I'm telling you this because I want to tell you this up front because I think it's something that, that has to be said early in the conversation is that I'm telling you to kill your semi-privates. Okay. The reason why I'm telling you to kill semi-private is that if you look at it statistically, it doesn't make sense. And like semi-private is one of those things as to where we need to show status and it's a VIP standpoint. Because if I'm looking at this and I'm in your gym, to be 100% honest with you, at the current state that it's at, and I see that like, I've got one class that's got two people and they're paying a third of what somebody's paying in semi-private, dude, I'm going to try to fist fight you. Yeah. Because you're taking away from my groceries, bro. Yeah. Right? So what I would say is, is let's get rid of semi-private. Let's reduce the class count to two. We could probably, and, and so Ed, I know we, you and I have kind of talked about this and Mike and Kale, we talked about this yesterday a little bit, but I almost feel like we can go to three classes per day instead of the, instead of the two and looking at it is if we go to, because if we go to that, then that would give us basically 41, 41, plus you got the challenges that are in there as well. And so we could probably get away with going with three classes per day, which gives us the opportunity to have 60 people in our sessions. We'd be able to cut the, the, the amount of classes per week, basically 
in half, in right? Half. And still serve all of the people that we have, right? Not have any of our attention towards the semi-private program yet. Scale that baby up and then add that layer down the road. That make, does that make sense, Prince? Absolutely. So kill the um, semi-private and just keep the, um because my current three classes per day for the um, larger group and just funnel everybody in there until that's packed out. Yes. Back. You got it. So can we talk about something else, though? Can What was your attention for the last month? Can we, can last we, stay, can we stay real quick, Fritz? Can we we got to stay real quick right here. Um, if you do three classes a day and you have a 20 cap class, right, per class, yeah. that's 60 people per day that you can service, which means that your hypothetical gym max at three times a week is 120 people. So you should be not thinking about adding a new class until you get in that 100 person, 110, 115 person range. Because you, right. be, you need to be at 75, right. 75%. Of the of basically the hypothetical max needs to be met before we before you even discuss in, in increasing another class. All right. So you've got a lot of wiggle room now on capacity. So fill yeah. those classes first, create an incredible experience and culture within those classes, give them everything you have, and you have a ton of room to grow. Right now you're at what 40, basically essentially 40 members, 41 members. Yeah. So yeah. you can triple the size of your gym right now. And before you even add another class. Um, what should my three class times be? What would y'all suggest as far as the times? My current times are um, 10 a.m., 6 p.m., and 7 p.m., Monday through Friday, and then 10 a.m. on Saturday. Okay. Why do you, you start have... at 10 a.m.? Yeah. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Why do you start at 10 a.m.? Um, I killed my 5 a.m. COVID kind of took out my early morning class and I just killed it. And then when I did, when I brought it back in, I only did semi-privates and that's the people that are in the 5 a.m. class currently. So you have the 5 a.m. It's just semi-private. Yeah. So technically, I mean, to be honest with you, you do all, and that's the one that all four show up to, I'm assuming. Yeah. Is that like, that's probably one of your bigger classes, even though it's only four. Now nah, the biggest class is the 10 a.m. The 10 a.m. Mm -hmm. is always usually full. The 10 for some reason, the 10 a.m. There's a lot of at home people. So when they work from home, they come and work out at 10. Okay. Fair enough. What is, um, what does full mean? Yeah, 12. 12 is full? But not, it's, it's 12 yeah, so members. <laughs> full. You need, to know average, you need to know average attendance per class. So, yeah. like, what is a 10 a.m.? What's the average attendance for the past two to three months? Yeah, can you pull that up, Fritz? And then you said five and six. Is that correct? Five and six p.m. in the evening. Six p. and seven p.m. Yeah. Oh, six and seven. Okay. Just to be sure that I have this too, it's five a.m., ten a.m., six and seven p.m. What other class? Yep. Are there other class times? Um, the five p.m. That would be the other semi-private. Okay. And the semi-private is only three times a week. Um, everything else is on um, Monday, Monday through Friday. Yeah, it's eight to ten. Um, I haven't seen a day in the past couple months that is lower than eight people. Wait, so, so that's eight. Less, than half, less than half of your actual capacity. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. It's still, it's still less than half. Right. Great. All right, cool. And so that's got eight, eight to 10 at 10 a.m. And then how much, what about your 5 p.m. session? That's the only, that's the semi probably only one yeah. person in, so we definitely killed that one. All right, so that was dead. 6 p.m. Um, 6 p.m. 6 p.m. is is five to six solid. Um, is that what your stats say, or is that what you, or is that what your feelings say? Give me a second. <laughs> I can definitely tell you that the 7 p.m. on Wednesdays and Fridays we barely have anybody, so those are fair you enough. know easy fair to enough. take out. Mm -hmm. Cool. So then, would it be so then we we understand that like that would be it would be responsible just to cut those right. Yeah, and then have people just sign up the other days. Yeah, I would say five to six on the six p.m. as far as um what I'm looking at now. Okay, and so all right, so if we get rid of seven p.m. right, so we know that we know that that's the class that we're gonna that we're gonna get rid of, and I I, I would assume that the people that are coming to the seven p.m. can make it to the six p.m. It's just a choice. Yeah, on that Wednesday and Friday, absolutely, because that's what we should do anyway. You we usually just call them and give them to come early. Dope. So now you're going to give a better experience and be able to serve more. Would that be cool? Absolutely. Dope. All right. 
the 5 p.m. was a semi-private class. We're already we're already in the process of getting rid of that. Yep. Now, should I? Since I'm doing, um, I'm, I sell my semi-private in 12 week blocks. So I uh, finish out those blocks with these individuals, or just um, move them to another class. How should I do this? As far as switching it up on. In terms of your semi-private, like the conversation about moving into the about moving into the other like portion. Yeah. Cool. Is like you just want to you want to offer them better service. Like to be honest with you, how much how much longer do they have? Are they prepaid? Like they've already paid for an amount of time, or they're just paying monthly? They pay on um, every four weeks. Okay. Uh, yep. We're fine then. Yeah. We're good. Yeah. You just change the price. Yeah. Uh, you're you're coming in like a rock star. Yeah. All right. True indeed. All right. So kill the summer private. Kill the seven p.m. Wednesday and Friday. Oh. My suggestion keep would be keep the five you have the same times every day. Yep. Right. And then you yep. just fill those times. So no matter what, all your new people coming in, they know those times, fill those first. Yeah. And it's like, look at your numbers, Fritz, right? If you've got eight to 10 that come to one, four people that come to one, six people that come, there's plenty of room for expansion with a three time week schedule. Oh. Does that, do you understand where we're going, where I'm going? Where Absolutely. With Absolutely. So your Saturdays can be devoted, uh, and I know Ed will probably want to dive into this a little more too, but like your Saturdays can also be devoted into like that second part of the sale. That sub sales, yeah. Right, because then that allows you to have one centralized day that you're working on the sale. So you actually will probably make more cash on the Saturday than what you typically do, right? So like if we focused on during the week, we're working our fulfillment, which we, we'll get to the other part of fulfillment on the backside of this, um, because we need to talk about some other numbers that really can play into like longevity. And then uh, on Saturdays, what we do is we'll focus directly onto that secondary sale. Ed, is that kind of like where you were thinking about? 100%. So for me, I mean, tell me if this makes sense for it's like focus on one sale Monday through Friday, then focus on one sale on Saturday, hyper, hyper focused, right? Like tunnel vision. And then yeah. Sunday, hopefully spend some time with your family. And then Monday, start and do it again, right? As opposed to all this back and forth, run session, do challenge sale, do nutrition sale, do conversion sale, like it's your scattered attention way yeah. better to have a very focused attention. So you sell Monday through Friday, the challengers, you sell substitute nutrition on Saturday and they all start the following Monday. Cause you are selling challenges. Like sales yep. hack is great, <laughs> right? Like we're going to work on a couple of things there, but like, that's not the main issue right now, but like, getting all your attention back. So besides saving the time, cutting these classes, get you guys all your attention back to focus yeah. on the things that actually are going to move this business forward to reach your goal. Like that's the biggest thing about the schedule. You having a class of two people is depressing for you and for them. We're going yeah. to remove that. We're going to have exciting classes now that are full and energetic. Yeah. Like, so this brings me to another question and, and I was unsure about this because like, I under, like, so what we've basically done for you now is like we've cleared up plenty of time now, yeah. right? So the, the questions I know, and I know we kind of hit on this yesterday and, and I just was unsure about it, was then looking at like your closes and looking at the num like your churn percentages. Like, can we kind of talk our way through these numbers? Because it didn't, I couldn't really understand uh -huh. like, like where we were at. And so like, uh -huh. I, so um, the reason why I'm saying this is like, you'll now have more time to work on closes and you'll now have more time to work on nurturing, which looks like it's the gap, but I don't think that I have a good understanding of your numbers based on this because it shows that basically you had like a 13%. Uh, yes, Gail, is that we, uh, it shows you had like 13% churn, but if we look at the numbers and can place to that, did it can place to the, the people that you signed up in comparison to the, the amount of churn that you're saying that you had, it didn't really make any sense unless nobody converted. For the month of June? Yeah. Well, here, can I go back and paint a story real quick on what I saw and why this stood out to me? Yeah. So you sent over the numbers. Thank you, by the way. It was fantastic. I'm going through the numbers. And what I'm looking at, number one, is there's multiple things that I'm looking at. But Dave, can you share your screen? Can you share the numbers? I think it's going to be beneficial for you to, for us to visually walk through this. And then I'll kind of walk through what's missing right here and why this doesn't make sense. Okay. So I'm seeing April, May, and June. By the way, this is fantastic to be able to see it in this format. This is amazing. So I want to go down to, if you look at total members right here. So we went from total members. If you look, go down total members in May, in April, we had 39 EFTs, five PIFs. The PIFs stay the same. That's fantastic. There should be no churn on the PIFs, but then you've got 42 EFTs. So we went up by three in May and we had 38 EFTs. We went back down and we were below in June. Here's my question though. 
is you're signing up and closes. You had 10 challengers and four EFTs in April. You had 13 challengers and two EFTs in May, eight challengers, four EFTs, and one PIF in June. Yet our total client count actually dropped since April, which means your churn can't technically be seven, nine, and 13%. Because at 7%, you would have lost roughly three people. At 9%, you would have lost in that month, if these numbers are correct, you would have lost, uh, what is it? Um, four people. Five, four, four people, people, and then five people at 13%. 13. Yeah. What, you're, what you're losing right now is literally, you're losing more than what you're signing up or the exact same, basically. Correct. So you're actually, your churn is actually 30%. So Does you're that saying make sense? The, e, the EFT amount is incorrect, which is how many? Your EFT should be rising. Yeah. Because in yeah. April, if you sign someone up for a six week challenge, you should have been converting them in May, which means they would have been stacked in June. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Plus, besides the fact that you also signed up four EFTs in April, but in May, you only had an increase of three. You see what I'm saying? So we're missing something. So this leads to the question for me is, are you losing OG members or are you not converting new members? A little, well, I'm not losing OG members. I had a couple of OG members leave due to injuries this past couple months. Um, that was just two people, but everybody else um, has been people that I converted, stayed for maybe three months and then left. So can I ask a question too, Fritz? Because when we break down like the average cash collected per customer, it's less than it's less than our 199 price point. So are your OGs are your OGs paying you less money? My OGs are paying one thirty five, and it is to there we go. It is five 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 OG members. There's only five of them, and then I have one other person paying one sixty, and then everybody else is pretty much paying either that two forty or one ninety six. What percentage of paid in fulls do you have then? Because there's, um, some, there's, there's some aggregate that's missing. There is one, two, three. There are five. Um, well, there's six paid in fulls. Excuse me. There's six paid in fulls, including the one, the um, my one on one, which I didn't. I don't think I counted the one on one. Um, the one on one will include. It'll be six paid in fulls and all, and that's not included with the the amount of EFT. The thing that was so troubling when we looked at these yesterday is that your average client value, like the average amount of dollars EFTs are giving you per month, has dramatically dropped three months in a row. Yep. So June, your average client value was only one forty six across all of the. 38 EFTs in June. So and it was Fritz, like, like, let's show them the math. So Fritz, you can see this. Cause I want you to be able to see this is the math is you take total revenue minus your front end sales revenue, yeah. that number. And you divide it by 38 EFTs. Forget the pips. The pips already paid you. That was cash that was collected. Now run it on the EFTs that you have. And that puts it at 146. Now you might've had ancillary stuff put in there, which means that actually that number might be even lower than 146. Correct. Does that make sense, Fritz? Yeah, uh, messed up somewhere, obviously. It's all right. So, can the one thing, and I, I don't know if Kale, you were going to get to this because we kind of got sidetracked, but like the one number that I think that's missing for all of us is, is like with the number of people who you signed up, how many individuals actually converted? Go let's, that. Take it, let's take it month by month. So, in April, you had ten challengers. How many converted? All right, I'll pull that spreadsheet up. The power of knowing your numbers, bro. Yeah. So important. It's a game changer. All David, right. Starting you, in, you start in April. Huh? Yeah. yeah. So 11 um, challenges out of the 11, I converted. Oh, we had 14. Six. Six. Well, we had 10. We reported oh, we 10, 10 and four paid in fulls. Yep. Okay. So you had six. Four, yeah, six. It was um, 11 challenges in all and six converted. Okay. So six out of 11 are dope. And then what about the month of May? May was one, two, it was 10 in May. Yeah, 10 in May. And then I converted, maybe only converted two. Okay. And then what about okay. June? June, we yeah, had one, two, five in June and two converted. All right, your average conversion rate is 38%. Optimal is 70, right? So- from that piece. So a couple of things we're going to have to dive into. Number one is we want to look at a couple of things. Obviously we've got this in place. Now where your class schedule is set. You're going to need to raise. I think we talked about this. I just want to make sure we talk about this is obviously again, just to reiterate, you're raising your cap class to 20. 
You have yep. your three classes per day. We're scrapping semi-privates. Um, let's hit, if it's cool, Dave, let's hit lead gen real quick so we can yep. knock out the acquisition piece on this because there's a couple of things that we need to talk about. Is one is lead nurturing, the other is close rates um, yep. on this because this will help a ton. And then we want to attack fulfillment. Cool? Yeah. All right, sweet. Um, okay, so a couple of things real quick. Your CAC is fantastic. Your lead cost is $6. You're acquiring a client for $111 in June. A um, couple of things though, is I noticed is that your appointments, your booked appointments went from 60% in April all the way down. It went 61% in May, but then it went down to 42% in June. What changed? June, June was, was when I was doing, that's when I started to lead ads and I was getting a lot of, just a lot of, I, I don't like to call them bad, pros, bad um, prospects, but I couldn't get them in. I mean, yeah. it was a it, was say, it, it would it would be irresponsible for me to let just to let that moment slide let's not allow that right yeah so uh, number one so like and i gotta be real with you dude like there's no such thing as a bad prospect yeah. and so like at the end of the day like it's our obligation or your obligation to be able to, to do what it takes to get that person in so like i need you to flip that part of your thought process because that thought process is not allowed gotcha. are we are you, you you tracking me i'm with you cool are you using the lead nurture 1.0? Yes. Okay. okay. And so, when, did you, when did you implement that? Um, when I started to lead ads, when I started running um, lead ads immediately. Okay. Cool. Who is owning lead nurture? Do you own lead nurture? You do it? Yeah. Have you always owned lead nurture? So you did it in April, May, and okay. Yep. I had um my wife helped out a little bit in um June when we started getting because we was getting a lot of leads coming in. Okay. Um but for the most part, that's something I do. So are you following the uh call within five minutes and then implementing the 916 rule, which is clear that inbox at nine, at one, and at six every single day to make sure every single lead not only gets called, but when you miss it, you have three points within your day that you're looping through to make sure that we're hammering on every new lead and anyone else that needs follow up three times a day. No, I'm not. Um, so I am calling them with that. You got minutes. some time back. That's the only right. You didn't have the time back, right? Yes. So we we had to rebuild the vehicle, right? So that's yes. what we just did, and now here we are. We're going to be able to rebuild that day, so you can obviously put the efforts towards the towards a better plan. So I would just say, you know, if you you impl implemented that lead nurture 1.0 system in that training, you know that 916 three times a day plus five minute call, we should be able to get that schedule rate up. All right, gotcha. Um, next piece is your close rate. So your close rate went from 25% in April, 51% in uh, May, and then back down to 30, 29% in June. Walk me through what's up with that. That's a pretty big, were you the one doing the sales the entire time? Yep. I'm always the one doing the sales. Um, okay. So walk me through that. I wasn't focused this month. Um, well, last month, there was a lot going on. I just wasn't focused. There's not, okay. um, my kids, um, I got a autistic son going into college that's been kind of taking my attention, which is, that's what it's supposed to do. Not using it as an excuse, but it requires attention. And mm -hmm. then I got my daughter, she's, um, moving on to another school as well. So just that, that, um, between celebrations and them graduating and all that stuff that had my attention for the month. So that was June, right? So it sounds like yeah. a busy month. Okay. Yeah, so and, what I I had, and I didn't have my, at, Normally my ads on or a lot, they was on, they was, I was turning ads off because I just, I didn't have time to call them within that five minute um, range. Got it. We're moving forward. We'll talk about that. Cause I do want to talk about that moving forward, but going back to April, why was April 25% close rate and why was May different? So what happened in April and June, was there a similar thing in that or was April was is that May the normal? in Hawaii? No, nah, April was because I'm seeing a 90 day yeah. snapshot, and I don't know what's what's Fritz norm and what's an outlier. Is the 51% yeah. an outlier and something that we need to work towards to try to do again, or is that your norm yeah. and you just had two weird months where you got you had a lot of things on your plate and maybe you were out of town and something happened. It was the point where you really started wrapping into getting the ads in, and it was kind of like I think the 50% is. More so where I'm at. Okay. So are you in the boiler room every day? No, I'm not. Okay. So we're going to do that, right? Yes. 
I got to commit. You got that time too now. So we got that time. Yeah. So we go bowl their room. And the good news about it is if you do the 916 rule by nine o'clock, so your time at eight. 8.45 to 9, yeah. you're clearing out all your leads. You hop on boiler room for 30 minutes. Now you're training objection overcomes. And then by one, you're doing it again. You got your sales stuff in the evening. By six before, you already cleared out everything. And then you got your sales appointments and you're doing everything there. Because we need to be 50% or higher across the board from that closing percentage standpoint. Are you also recording all of your calls and your or your meetings? If you're meet, Hopefully you're meeting with them in person. Are you recording all of them? In person, not all the time. Um, on, of course, if I do it on Zoom, it's re automatically recorded. How many appointments are on Zoom? Um, like this week, we had three. Last week, it was none. It kind of depends on the opposition I get with them on the phone. When they don't want to come in, I'll just try to make it more convenient to get them get them on the call. Got it. So you're having them book to come in, but then if you're nurturing them and they're like, I'm hesitant to come in, is that how it's working? Yep. Yeah. They book for a phone call. When they originally come out there, they book for a phone call because the issue with, um, originally I had them booking to come in and people weren't showing up. So I just said, forget all that. Um, have them book for a phone call. Whether they book for a phone call or don't book, either way, I'm still calling them before, after, with, I mean, well, before the um, appointment or right after I get the lead in. And then I take it from there and get them to come in. The opposed, the opposed to just leaving it in their hands to take up a slot. And that's what was happening prior. When I let them um, book a slot, I had to hold that slot personally for somebody that may or may not come as opposed to me calling them, booking them in. So it, especially with your lead flow right now, what what may be the best way to do this, let's, let's, let's not create more hoops, right, to jump through because you're going to have loss at every stage. And I've done millions of dollars in ad spend and testing all this. It's, it's very hard to do the phone call, right? Um, so if we can, basically you were feeling no shows, right? So people would take up a spot and then yeah. they wouldn't show up. Right. And so I, I hear you wanted to create a solution. Is it okay if I give you a better solution? Absolutely. All right. Have everyone booked to in person. It's just how we do it. Right. But yeah. what we're going to do is we're going to actually have multiple seats available. So we're going to actually book small group sales. So it's going to yeah. be six spots. Okay. Available. Now, if you have a 50%, 40% show rate, which it looks like you can certainly hit, or we'll probably even get better than that, then you're going to be sit, you're sitting with two to three people if that's a full time block. Okay. So now you're good to go. Your, your lead flow is so great that you should be able to fill those small groups with at least a couple bodies. Okay. Yeah. And the, and the beauty part of the, the beautiful part of that sale too, Fritz is the fact that like, there isn't really a ton that changes in regards to like what you do, right. even if you were to get one to two people that showed up in, in regards to it, cause it's still a game of numbers. So even yeah. if you had the additional person to show up, it's just a matter of you controlling the frame, which you are already doing well. And then being able from that standpoint to like, just move directly into the sale. So like, there isn't a ton of complexity that's there for you. The sale stays the same. All the parts stay the same for you. You just close the individuals who sit down. Yeah. And your nurture is simpler too, because you don't have to have a phone nurture and then, right. It's just a one appointment, right? Okay. Everybody, it's all we, it's all, it's all we do in the building. Right. I would even go as far as to say, it probably doesn't make sense to allow people on zoom right now. Let's just go everybody in the building. Let's go small group. We do it one way and we get great at that. Okay. It's also, it's also hard and it's kind of weird that people won't come in for an appointment and you're trying to have them come in and work out. Yeah. Yeah. So like if they won't meet with you, at your gym, why would they join your gym, period? doesn't feel genuine whatsoever. That's what I say to myself, but then I... Uh, yeah, and Fritz, the first time... You know, like, you know, people down the street, yeah, I'm coming, I'm coming, and then still don't come. Like, no. <laughs> and, and Fritz, the first time you close two, three people at once, you're going to realize, wait, uh, you know, why would I block off that same amount of time for Zoom that may or may not show? That's one-to-one. -one. So <laughs> right <laughs> after the strat meeting, um, when I went over to group sales, I was like, it just kind of blew my mind. I was like, let me give it a try. The very next day, I closed two people together, and they kind of convinced each other. It was hilarious. And I walked away from it like, wow, okay. Let's so do I, more of that. Remember, did we talk about isolation, though? Like, I just want to hit on this group sale. Did we talk? Have you heard us talk about how to isolate the people that have questions? You ask them, like, all right, all they need to know is who's in. You know what I mean? Anybody that has questions, give me one second. I'll get with you. Perfect. Close the people that don't have any questions are good to go and they're in and then just wait for the questions and answer all the questions after we get that person yep. that you closed out. Perfect. Yep. Okay, cool. Sweet. All right. Awesome. So lead nurture 916, use lead nurture 1.0. You got that set. Your sales, you're going to be doing joining the boiler room at 9 a.m. Monday through Friday. 
work at that. You're going to start recording all of your sales appointments in person. Okay. Pull up your laptop and do it over zoom, open up zoom, or you can do a screen recording. doesn't matter. Just have it okay. facing you when you're talking to people and just record it. And if you want to let them know, obviously legally let them know like, Hey, we record this for training purposes, just as a heads up, um, training quality assurance purposes. Everyone good with that. Great. Your faces will not be a part of this. Right. And so yeah. you have that show their. You don't have to record their faces or anything like that. And you're going to move to group sales. Gotcha. Sweet. I want to hit this before we get into fulfillment. I want to hit this. This is the type of mentality you need to have Fritz on this. You need to think I'm going to put my head down and you're a hard worker. You wouldn't be a gym owner if you weren't, you need to put your head down and you need to not look up and start breathing until you're at 150 members. Yep. Got it. You're not getting distracted, not doing anything. You're doing this, this right here. You're going to fill all your classes. You're going to do everything. When you have to go and add another class and you start filling that, then let's talk. And then we'll talk about expansion revenue. We'll talk about the other stuff, but like you should be head down. This is all I do. Cause think about it. Technically, if you wanted all of the money, I'm not saying this is, you have to do this, but you could run three classes a day, get to 120 people in your gym. And you're only running three classes a day. You and your wife can do that. Yeah. Like, dude, that's yeah, it's, just you, it's up. Like, that's a that's a forty fifty thousand dollar a month gym <laughs> where you're taking, you're taking home twenty five to thirty thousand dollars a month. Just a heads up. Yeah. So and you said you said something too, Fritz. Yeah, like you said something too, and I, I wanted to kind of hit on it really quickly before we get to fulfillment. It's like your wife is moonlighting and helping you, right? Yeah. So is that a role that she's going to stay doing? Like, kind of, what does that look yeah. like? Yeah, she's doing? um, she was full time um. Last year and the goal at the beginning of the year was her to go part-time and that's what she did. And you know, I mean, we've been we have we're not homeless yet, so that's a good good thing. Um, so it's, the goal is for her to actually leave her job and come on board 100 percent So tell me what the magic number is then. Cause like we can we can we can dance around it, but like let's talk, about, right. let's talk about the magic number. Well, we already kind of kind of discussed this. Um just to, you know, I mean, of course, just to pay everything. I'll be looking at somewhere around the um 18 range but of course i don't want to just pay my bills so 30k plus would be would put a smile on my face sweet so is that 30k this is 30k in revenue correct or like or 30K 30K in revenue we work backwards instead can we look at profit because yeah. like 30k revenue doesn't really yeah, I, was like, I was like that doesn't work yeah yeah because like your expenses may go up you may have to hire more people you may get to that point and you may be cool 30k is cool but like i'm only taking home Maybe I'm taking home 20K, but I hate my life because I'm also working. We're both working yeah. 60 hours. Now I have yeah. to hire someone. Take home goes down. So like, what is the actual nut that uh, you guys okay. need? You say what now? I'm sorry, Kel. What's your, what's your monthly nut? The m- monthly nut is um, 20. <laughs> take a little laugh. There we go. All right, sweet. All right, so 20K, take home? Yep, yep. Okay. Do you want a quick little math that you can start tracking to help you figure out like what, based on your percentages, your net margins and your take home, how to figure that out down the road, like how yeah. much more revenue. You yeah. So just what you need to do is just figure out, divide how much you're taking home now into your total revenue. So what did you take home in June? I actually have your numbers real quick. So take home was your profit was 25, 10, right? In June. Yes. Okay, so 2510 divided by your total revenue was 11,950. That's a 21% net margin. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So take $20,000. If you maintain those net margins, so I just want to be realistic with you $20,000, this isn't, this is going to change. Your margins are going to go up. But at $20,000, you take that divided by 0.21. You need to be making to take home at your current net margins. You need to be, Top line revenue, $95,000 a month. <laughs> right? Your yes. margins are going to go up. Your margins will go up. We're cutting classes. We're cutting costs. You're going to expand. You're not going to add new classes. Trust me, like all the levers that you're going to pull right now are going to increase this. Yeah. But what you can do to start tracking this is every month, look at what was my actual net margin percentage. Am I going up from 21%? Because you had some months here, like April, uh, May was... May was almost, was it profitability? Yeah, May was almost 50%, right? So you're right there. Yeah. But 
got to understand just reverse engineer because you can take it and you can divide 20,000 by the decimal point that is the percentage point, right? So if you have 30% net margins, take 20,000 divided by 0.3, that's going to give you the total top line revenue that you need to make. All right. Cool. Writing this down. All right. Yeah, Sweet. Are we clear on, so we're clear on lead nurture. We're clear on classes. We're clear on what we're doing there. We're clear on lead nurture. We're clear on sales. You good to move to fulfillment? Yes, sir. Okay. And we're clear on long-term goal. Like we're not looking up. We're going head down. Y'all are going balls to the wall until you get 150 clients. Sounds good. That's it. No price changing. No nothing. Nothing. You're All right. Gonna, what I, I have some questions about, um, since we just moved, we'll be doing a grand opening and we haven't done, um, a paid out, paid in full play in a while either. Um, how should I lay that out? Um, and we haven't done an internal challenge either in a couple of months due to the whole move and everything. So can I be honest with you? Yeah. Don't do it. Mm -mm. Don't do anything. You, you just heard. So the, the whole thing, like, so you ever heard me talk about the Kentucky, the Kentucky Derby before you ever heard me tell that story? <laughs> yes. Right? Tell us again. Tell us again. There's, there, there's always, there are always two things that happen or two things that you can find on every race in the, or every, every horse in the Kentucky Derby. Number one okay. is a jockey because the jockey keeps them in line, keeps them going straight and drives them towards where they need to go. And number yes. two, blinders, right? You're fortunate enough that you have the jockey. It's dope. You've got all of us. You've got your coach. You have the jockey. So the jockey is keeping you going towards your goal. But what you're not putting on right now is blinders. Kale just said legitimately five minutes ago, like the number one focus is to drive your business to get to that 120 to 150 members. So like it needs to be EFT or bus right now. Okay. Sell, as many, sell as many challenges as you can sell. Get as much front end cash as you can get. Ensure that we're going in the right direction and convert like a mother. All right. All those other extra things are gonna distract us. From I got you. Oh, Kentucky Derby. I got you. I got you. All right, cool. Can you um will you explain to us a little bit while we're talking fulfillment? Can you tell us like what that like what the fulfillment like start from like onboarding of an individual to like what happens directly after that when they're when they're in the challenge with you guys? Um as far as onboarding, um as soon as I sign them up, um I send their information. Um it's in the spreadsheet, so my VA gets it. Um she sent out the um Thanks to this card, she put them um, into the um, sent out their um, link for the powertrain with an um, accountability app. Get them set up on that, and now um, sends out their intake form and put them into the ninety day um, fulfillment spreadsheet. Okay. And then I um, meet with them. Of course, I do my nutrition meeting, and then from there, um, they'll be booking classes i show them how to book their class from there and they're working out so there's two pieces that are missing here can you dive into what your onboarding meeting looks like and then tell me what how long before like how long when does that happen so typically speaking is that seven days is that three days like when is that um typically one to two days um unless they just got to do it on a weekend and say it was a monday but it's they don't do anything until they do the nutrition meet. i don't allow any workouts you don't do nothing until you go through the nutrition meet. All right, that's beautiful. So during that nutrition meeting, are we are we future pacing in regards to like building like like on the do you use a slide deck or is it just you talking? Slide deck. No. Doing it on that slide deck, is it like cool? Like here are the parts, like here's how we communicate, setting the standards, setting the tone in regards yeah. to like what it's like building the perfect client. And yep. then on the back side of that, are we selling them supplements to get them tied in? So now they have a tangible item. I was selling supplements. I have gotten away from that. So that's Ed French for so that's <laughs> French for no. Yes, yes, French for no. All right, cool. So then we understand that like those are the two biggest components that have to happen in that onboarding in, in meeting to get immediate compliance. And Ed, I'm sure Ed, can you, you want to talk to like, I know you've got the beautiful stats that roll yeah. with this. So you want to talk to yeah. me? Just real fast. You know, I love you. Why did you decide to stop selling supplements? I'm just curious. Because um, the stuff they wanted, I, yeah, they haven't stopped. Got it. So because a couple of things are out, you're like, I shouldn't sell anything. Yeah. <laughs> Got it. Okay. Just making sure. Just making sure. So let me let me give you a really fast analogy. And good news is that everything's back in stock in September anyway, so don't even worry about it. But here's the analogy. If you had 10 trainers and four of them quit, do you stop running sessions? Absolutely not. No. So you have 10 products and you can't sell four of them, sell the other six, right? Okay. Um, but here's, here's the part what Dave mentioned. When they buy the products, they're more committed to the program and your churn ain't great and your conversions ain't great. So the more we can, one, monetize that person, more money for the business, the better it is. But the more committed they are to the journey 
the better results they will get. Do you think if they got better results, they would stay long? Absolutely. Right. So you're doing an unethical thing by not selling on the product. Gotcha. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Cool. And so I'm just going to get on you after this and be like, get back to lines then because we practice this every day. So we can, we can, we can help you. But, but beyond that real fast for, for nutrition meetings in general, yeah. what, what do you believe is the purpose of that meeting? Forget subs. Um, just to get them prepared for, get, get them all the tools they need to get them ready for the journey. Okay. Can I give you my one word for nutrition meeting that I think the purpose is? Mm-hmm. Wow. That's what it's about. Wow. They go, wow, that guy's on point. I can't believe all the all this stuff and bonuses and recipe guides and shake guides. I can't believe how thorough and professional this is. I believe in this guy as my coach. They should I finally that. found my home, like I, my place. Exactly. Finally, you know what I mean? Like that. Right. Yeah. So because you just sold them, you just had a, a sales conversation a couple of days before and you dug into their pain and talked about their future. And they were like, yes, I believe you. Here's my money. And then you got to wow them at the onboarding. So they can't wait for their first workout. And then comma, you can also monetize it with subs, but the primary thing is wow them. You can't okay. be exhausted. Like this needs to be something that like you're excited about or they're not excited about it. And so you can't be exhausted in that in that matter. So really quickly, we understand. So do you understand where we're going here, Fritz? Is like the Absolutely. two biggest points, the two biggest points behind this is, is that your energy and your commitment to saving their life because that's what you committed to do on the sale. Technically that was, that was the agreement that you signed. Yeah. Right. And so like your, your ability to work that side has to happen in that. And then there also needs to be that ethical commitment from you to be able to give them the right tools for them to be successful, i.e. selling them supplements in that situation. So I wanted to go, if it's cool with you, I want to wrap this kind of up. And I wanted to go over the last, the last piece of this. Cause like one of the things that we always talk about is like being able to paint, like what that basically the, the wedding cake model, like what that looks like big picture for you. Does that make sense? Yes. One of the things that I'm going to say before we even get to that, because I want to hand that part off to Kale at the end. But one of the things that I'll say is that, and I think we can all be in agreement on this, is that like you're going to have a, a beautiful choice here in a little bit in regards to like what direction that you go with this wedding cake. And I think it's going to be phenomenal. But the goal right now, mentally in your head, needs to be dope. I've got to hit 100. I got to hit 150 members. Got gotcha. you. Don't pick That's your head. Up. Cool. Kel, you want to you wanna hit the, the last wedding cake piece for him? Yeah, let me show you real quick. So this is just a visual to show you walking through your actual gym and the steps that we need to do it and timelines. So let me share my screen. Excuse the disgusting handwriting, um, but here's where we're at. So layer one, this is large group. So this right here, this is, I'm going to say this, large group, right? You're going to get to 150 EFTs at 49 a week. You get to that, your EFT revenue is 31.6 a month, okay? Yep. But you have to keep selling, correct? Yep. Because we're going to have yep. churn no matter what. So no matter what, let's just assume you're only selling 15 people. It's reasonable to believe based on your lead flow, everything else in the past, it's probably really easy. You're most likely going to sell more than 15, but let's just say you only sell 15. Yep. Okay? 15 people at 599, it's essentially, it's 9K. It's like a buck under, a couple bucks under 9K. Yep. Right. So just off that, you're doing 40K a month just right there. Now, you're not thinking about anything except you can start adding in the subs piece here. You can start doing that now, but you're not even going to think about semi private until you get to 150 EFTs. And the reason why you're not going to do that is you don't need the distraction, you don't need anything else. Plus, you want to create demand for your semi private program. Got you. Okay. So your next level that you're going to add is going to be semi private, which is here. Okay. I'm just going to put it as SP, semi-private. What you're going to do is you're going to use a semi-private golden ticket upsell. When you get to this, you're going to use this, the golden ticket upsell um, program, and you're going to upsell 30 people in eight weeks. 30 of those people, that's going to make you roughly $75,000 in eight weeks when you do this. That'll give you 30 EFTs at 149 a week, which is going to give you an extra 19K a month. Then what you're going to do is on the flip side, you're going to start selling people straight into this at 3K for 12 weeks to sign up. You're making another 15K right off the top. Okay. All of a sudden you're making another $34,000 from there. We're at $74,000 right there. You add in SUPS based on 30% of your current clientele actually using SUPS. That's $80 in commission. I'm not even counting the, the revenue. I'm talking your take. Nice. Okay. Because your commission is $80 on a two, on a, on a four pack, right? 
So you're making that commission. So you're adding another 5K here. You're at 79K. That means you've got wiggle room right there. Make a couple of sales, do a couple of things, add some internal plays. All of a sudden you're doing a million dollars a year out of a 1600 square foot facility. I'm going to build that foundation, Fritz. You got to build the foundation, right? I'm with you. I'm with you. So what right. would you Real quick. Well, one question I have, what would you project based on where we're at and um, all the tools you gave us? How quickly should we get to that 150 if we just head down narrow? I, I think that was something that we forgot to mention as well, is that like this also is predicament upon there needs to be a bump in ad spend just a little bit as well, is if you're looking at your numbers, looking at your CAC, looking at everything that you guys are sitting on, I mean, less than $5 leads, everything that you guys are working with, is that I would strongly suggest Fritz bumping your ad spend up to just for opportunity sake to get you up to $100 a day in ad spend. This gives you more opportunities. This also critically increase, like it critically increases your ability to get to that number and drive it a little quicker as well. Gotcha. Kale hit something on the head or Mike hit something on the head. And I just wanted to say it really quickly to you guys because I know we're running out of time. Is that like, as you guys are going through this and we're thinking about this and Mike mentioned the part about foundation, this whole thing and like looking at your numbers, what it's really done is it's shown you that like you guys have had cracks in your business and like, yeah. we just have never fixed them. We just painted over those cracks time after time, after time, after time again, right? Yeah. Is that like, you're looking at a situation, you're like, cool, I can fix this. And then you just paint over it instead of actually fixing the root or the foundational issue. And so like today, you guys got the playbook on how to fix the foundational issue. Absolutely. So if you're willing to do the things that we're telling you to do, which Fritz, you promised, I know she went on the call last time, but you told me like, you told me point blank that, hey, this is where it's at. Then legitimately yeah. speaking, like if you're willing to do that, then- the rest is history. So we appreciate you, dude. Um, appreciate Thank you, you for letting us do this, dude. And then um, obviously you got the game plan and then we'll send it over to you too, dude. So appreciate the hell out of you. Um, yeah. Talk to you soon. Thank you. Thank you right. very much. Thank you for your time. Appreciate it. appreciate it. Now, if you like that video and you thought it was really interesting, and you want to learn more about what we do here at Gym Launch, go ahead and down in the description below, you can click the link. You can download one of our PDFs called the seven money models, where we walk through exactly how we scale gyms to over hundred thousand dollars a month, like clockwork. And when you download that, you'll have an opportunity to book a call with our team. And if that interests you, go ahead and book a call with our team and we'll walk you through how we can do exactly what we just did with Fritz for your gym.